Hi, my name's Sophie and I represent Timothy Syndrome Alliance. These boys here are my world. The middle one is Calvin, he's 13. Calvin was delayed with walking and didn't babble as a baby. In fact, he didn't really speak until his first year at school and then it was alongside Makaton signing. He was eventually diagnosed with Developmental Verbal Dyspraxia, DVD, and Developmental Delay, Language Learning and Social Communication Difficulties. Symptoms he was experiencing didn't really add up for the paediatrician, despite tests for diseases such as Angelman and Fragile X. In 2012, our geneticist entered us into the Deciphering Developmental Disorders, DDD study. We heard nothing until 2016 when they confirmed a change in the CACNA1C gene, Timothy syndrome. This was backed up by the 100,000 Genomes Project in 2019. An ECG confirmed a long QT heart rhythm. We had been on our diagnostic odyssey for nine years. So there are three different types of the disease, type 1, type 2 and atypical, which despite all being caused by mutations in the CACNA1C gene, present distinctively. This gene codes for an L-type voltage-gated calcium channel known as CAV 1.2. Timothy syndrome types 1 and 2 primarily affect the heart. The modification of the calcium channels in the cardiac tissue results in delayed cardiomyocyte repolarization, which manifests itself as a prolonged QT interval and can cause life-threatening arrhythmias. Apart from cardiac manifestations, individuals affected by type 1 and type 2 may present with further characteristic clinical signs such as baldness at birth, craniofacial dysmorphisms, cutaneous syndactyly in type 1 and hip dysplasia in type 2, to name a few. The presence of such characteristics may prompt genetic investigation shortly after birth, yet this isn't always the case. In other instances, individuals affected by Timothy syndrome get diagnosed after cardiac concerns become clinically apparent, for example under anaesthesia during surgery. Individuals affected by the atypical type of the disease usually present with unspecific multi-system complaints, which may include but are not limited to neurological, endocrinological and gastrointestinal anomalies and may exhibit no prolonged QT interval. Due to the complex multi-system nature of the syndrome, affected individuals should be managed by a multidisciplinary team made up of different specialists and various allied health professionals, such as speech and language therapists, occupational therapists and physiotherapists. There are currently no treatment options. Research has predominantly been heart-based, although we do have some brain studies underway in the UK with the Neuroscience and Mental Health Research Institute and the University of Oxford. I registered TSA as the Charitable Incorporated Organisation at the end of September 2019 to find answers and to find other families. On our board of trustees, we have Catherine Timothy, after whom TS was named, and Andy Golden, a research scientist at the National Institute of Health who works with microscopic worms, C. elegans. At that time, there were around 43 living cases of Timothy syndrome in the world that we knew of. Since the beginning of 2020, we've found 26 new families. We currently have 10 families in the UK. Our oldest is 16. Our natural history study is underway with around 60 families taking part and we're in the process of setting up a patient registry to accelerate research. Understanding the subtle changes between the differing mutations will give a greater understanding of the function of the CACNA1C gene at large. The potential reality is that every single tissue is working incorrectly as it expresses in every cell of the body. Our unmet need is identification of these children. Awareness is low and as a result so is diagnosis. Both the DDD study and the 100,000 Genomes Project are completed. In the UK, how we define these children before they have a health complication? If our prevalence is one in a million, there are at least another 7,000 families globally to be found, many of whom will be on their diagnostic odyssey. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.